stupid. <laughs> Stanley. I got my black socks, my black mops, and the brown paper bag. Man, I'm ready to race. I got my caps locked, only fat tops, and my brown paper bag. Man, I'm ready to race. Yeah, so just wait around the block. I'm keeping up, never am I persuaded by the clock or invaded by some cops. Chicks hitting me, but I'd rather be painted on a rock while they're faded on Ciroc. Sad, cause it's the alcohol advertisement you amped on. Find me on your corner, filled in like a scantron. You think your man's gone, but I'm catching three more Only caps that you got on lock is your laptop keyboard So how is it I'm considered a criminal While your commercialized delivery systems message subliminals It's critical seeing and hearing at a developmental age It's minimal how I'm bellowing with rage But still I cock back the 311G and let it spray We on some graveyard shift and never see me in the day You can catch me in the bay or in your local shop racking Your name ain't catch your fame so tell your folks to stop bragging Off tops we make sure the walls cop and vanish Sun doesn't rise till the next hour let's take advantage We have the upper hand and it's apparent that you planning with well-funded marketing techniques life spanning what's in question here is the public aesthetic and the ethics behind the modification and two-dimensional alteration of that public space what's the difference between a graffiti artist and an advertisement campaign run by a corporation the answer is one stands to profit from the 500 billion dollar turnover advertisements generate worldwide while the other risks neck and limb for a little a, peer support and recognition, or B, for the sake of adding a little beauty to the world in a derelict place forgotten by the mass of society. Now, which party do you think is legal and which illegal? Of course, the corporate graffiti that is much more ubiquitous and permeates our every single walk of life is. Graffiti in its raw sense cannot be commodified. That is, there's no place for it in the market. It operates out of the narrow confines of the capitalist world where everything must make money or be destroyed, including nature. In that sense, graffiti is anti-systemic and one of the last real art forms out there. Art solely for the purpose of enhancing the public aesthetic. What a foreign concept. We find ourselves in society's forgotten places, surrounded by decay, rust, grime. Many of the places we paint serve utilitarian purposes, like dams, tunnels, retaining walls, abandoned factories and canals. The definition of a utility is something designed to increase the general public's happiness. So in that regard, art could be considered a utility, but not, not when looked at through the lens of modern society. We don't value the artist the way we should. Industrial grime poses a sharp juxtaposition to the natural forces that bring about its eventual decay. Iron and moss, steel beams covered in ivy, a canal with a creek permeating its core, industry and nature, it's this interaction between the biological and the mechanical that gives rise to the inspirational forces behind what I choose to portray in my art. A piece can only capture and say so much. Like a poem, it's abstract and can be interpreted many different ways by the viewer. So I try to capture the general essence invoked by my surroundings, project those feelings on the wall in the form of a piece, and hope other passers-by who lurk in society's underbelly can connect and sympathize with this stranger's thought process. There's something special about that. Off the walls, it made me clench as I crept into a ball, wondering why blundering has me left so appalled. So appalled. I get my mind straight to adjust to the blind state, trusted the lines traced and covered in fine taste. It must have sunk in and dithered my head, cause the things I see in dark's what I remember instead. Remember instead.